We'll start with uh, turning on the Butson burner, maybe. Okay, got it going. Now the Butson burner doesn't give you the heat that the, that the torches do, so you have to kind of be patient with that. What I like to do when I start is make sure all my instruments are clean because I don't know who's been using them. I want to make sure the wax that, that I'm putting on is what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and heat those, wipe them off either with a, a paper towel or a gauze pad, okay? I'm going to start off with the gray and I'm just going to check here and see again like I say I'm I'm uh, kind of new at this too so with this little instrument you heat the back of it and then it will flow the drop that you want to the tip of the to the tip of the instrument okay maybe we'll see here Okay, I don't know if you see that, but that's, if you're having a hard time getting it to the tip of the, the instrument, heat, heat behind that and that will distribute it to where you want it, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, let me see if I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my sticky wax on. Dalji needs a drop, maybe. And it's no biggie where you put that, okay? If, if you don't like it, you can uh, heat this up and maneuver it where you want if you got too much on, okay? But you will want a little bit on there. I, I'm going to avoid the margins too because, again, I don't want it around there when I'm carving back the tooth. When I feel like I've got it sufficient, I'm going to go ahead and start. So I'm going to, what I want to do is I'm going to look at the, the opposing tooth and kind of give that as a background, but I'm going to start with the cusp tips. I know this tooth has five different cusps, so let me just see if I can get it going here. Can you see that? Uh, I'll get them a few more here. We'll... Boy, it's awful quiet. So I kind of have, I don't know if you can see that, um, I kind of have a basic, just where those cusps are gonna start, okay? And then I'm gonna build those up. Now, I don't have the opposing on right now, but you will need that as we build this up, we'll need to check the occlusion to make sure we're in the right place. But for right now, we're just gonna try to build these up a little bit. And I can do that here real quick, I think. I'm gonna try. Yes. Yeah, now it doesn't matter. Everything can touch the sticky wax. Just 
it'll all be blended together and it should stay on your Typodon, okay? Again, I'm not that good at this. Um, if, if I was a lab tech, this would be done real quick, but I'm not, so. But you can get the idea, and it shouldn't take too long to get these kind of where you want them, okay? One of the main mistakes I see students doing is these are generally too close together, and the marginal ridges are too close to the occlusal table. They don't go out far enough. So we'll show you that as we go along. If anybody has questions as we're doing this, don't hesitate to speak up. So as I'm looking here, I wanna make sure I look down the occlusal line here and I can see that these cusp tips are in line with your other, your other cusps. Okay, again, you don't want them too far out. You don't want them too close. Just want them just right, okay? Is everybody catching that idea right there? You see those cusps starting to form? Okay. Now you have to be careful you don't get too carried away. Um, you know, you want this in occlusion, so we gotta, and this is probably not the best type of that I can work with, but I can see right now my distal lingual cusp is probably a little kiwampus, okay? A little off, maybe a little high. So you don't want to do that and break break everything. You have to be kind of careful as you do that. I can see right now. Pardon? Okay, so. Um, hey, let me see if I, I'm wearing a mask for a reason here. Okay, there. How's that? Is that better? Okay, so I just tried my occlusion and I can see the distal lingual cusp is hitting right here. So I got to be careful with that. You, you know, you you want to check that um, quite often. That way, you don't get too high because if you check it and it breaks, then you start over. Okay. So now I'm just going to try to add and make these cusps more look look more like a cusp, I guess. I'm hoping I've got that tooth in the right way. Boy, would I be in bad shape. 
if I told you guys to put it in the right way and I didn't do it. <clears throat> Can you see how those lingual cusps are starting to look like a tooth now? And like I say, the main, I think one of the main concerns we have is that you you don't come out to the full, like these teeth have got a contact on the mesial and the distal, okay? Now I can carve back some of that where it's touching on the mesial. So I'm not too concerned about it. I want to make sure all of my base on my typodont tooth is covered, okay? Don't leave any voids along that edge. Everybody see that okay? And it would be a good idea to have this sheet on hand with, yeah, if I burn it, um, with the occlusal portion of the crown so you know, you know, you can keep an eye on that, kind of give you the idea of the anatomy again. As you feel this, you want to make sure there's no voids. You just, you know, melt it into the existing wax. And if I'm going to go ahead and switch over here, I'm going to go with the big amount right there in the occlusion. I'll be revamping a little bit, but I'm going to just try to get this all in there, okay? Again, you can just, if you want, just put a bunch of wax in there and carve back. I kind of like this, this technique a little bit better because it just helps me, it helps me um, locate where my cusps and everything should be. And if I'm gonna air, I'm gonna air on too much wax, I can always carve it back. But your margin should have all of the wax on there, okay? Remember this tooth has a lingual incline, so you wanna make sure that you incorporate that with your waxing here, okay? You don't want those lingual cusps too far on the buckle.
Now, this, this will be the test here of putting that together and see. This might be a little tricky because the, the uh, contact here is kind of on that incline that Dr. Janice said you don't want it to have. So I'm gonna try to do the best I can with the anatomy ideal, but then you have to also, you know, you have to also deal with, with um, the contact. And that's where this exercise comes into play. We have to, we have to start recognizing that these teeth oppose other teeth. As I look down it from the occlusal, I'm trying to get the shape of the, the of the uh, occlusal view, and that should be becoming familiar with you guys that since you've you've drawn this and you've waxed it. Okay. Now I'm going to take, I'm gonna go ahead and take my carvers now and I'm gonna to try to locate where my, where my um, anatomy should be. And I may have to end up doing this two or three times, I don't know, but we're gonna try here. I know those lingual cusps, they're about equal in size, so I'm gonna bring that lingual groove in, um, come in and try to, make this look like a tooth. And this mesial buckle is gonna be a little bit, and that's your biggest cusp, remember, so. And then we wanna develop a fossa area and a fossa area here. I use a discoid cleoid on the outside, on the outside surfaces. I'm gonna go ahead with either my half hull and back or my full hull and back. I wanna get that margin right back to the typodont tooth, okay? See how that works? I'm gonna use the tooth portion to kind of show me where I need to go with that. And the same on the lingual here. And even interproximal, I'll kind of clean this up a little bit. Everybody see that? Can you see kind of the general outline? Now I'm gonna go back to the waxing. Some of these cusps are a little flat, so I wanna to try to make some triangular ridges. See if I can get away with some of that. So I see this, I wanna build this cusp up.
want that distal cusp to be a little more prominent than what I have, so I'm going to try to bring that in there again. I'll have to carve back some. But See how quick you can make that happen? <laughs> okay, now we can, again, I'm gonna go back to carving here a little bit. Just try to carve. If a cusp doesn't look good, then I'm gonna come back in and add some wax and recarve it, okay? So now we just try to carve back the cusps. towards me, sorry. Am I losing you? Are you going to sleep? giving you an idea okay we seeing that start to develop okay so I don't know I don't know what you're gonna do for the rest of the time you've got a half hour to do it and then you can just go play <laughs> anyway I'll work on this then then we'll want to polish it and everything okay but just work on it do you have the idea does anybody have any questions so I'm going to kind of fiddle around with this a little bit more, but you kind of get the idea. You can take off on your own. Do you have, everybody have enough wax to help? We don't, we don't have wax over here. There's either a white one or a, one or the other. There's more in the containers over there. Here we go. Are these the There was a few out here. That may be the last one. Does anyone else still need one? 
people lied. Someone didn't raise their hand. Because I made five. <laughs> you need one too? No, I want to check and make sure. Nice. You need it. Anyone else need a two? One, two, three. And people are just eating the tea. <laughs> Out or there's that, or you can try to fit it back in, but
Vernon, if you want to say anything about what you're doing, you're still, still filming. Yeah. So just, um, just basically checking the anatomy on everything and kind of adding where I see it's lacking. And blending it in. You see that okay? Mm -hmm. Is it starting to look like a tooth? Yeah, it looks really nice. Incorporate all of the things we talked about on this tooth. Mm -hmm. uh, which cusps are larger, which grooves go where. And I think I'm pretty close to where I want to be. Well, we ought to have some interesting wax ups. Yeah, I think I'm going to polish and. Yeah, that looks like a molar. <laughs> polish and call it. So, uh, to check the occlusion, are they going to use articulating paper? Or yeah, uh, the, actually the, the um, powder, Dr. Doctor, um, Ladder's going to do that. Oh, he's going to do that? Okay. Well, he's going to lecture on that, I think. Well, I must be a, a dummy because I've never been able to get the powder to work. Oh, I, I don't like that. Yeah, Dr. I'll let Dr. Um, I'll let Dr. Louder figure that one out. That's his. This is what color wax you can use uh, either red or green. Yeah. Or blue, and it's going to show up as well. I think all of them, all of the waxes, you should be able to do that. I think Some of the waxes are a dark red or a dark blue. But the ones we have are. Pretty yeah. light well, this color. Is a great color for showing up. Yeah, it is. So do we have grading to do, or are we um, Yes, we have about 15 carvings to yeah. do. <laughs> and other than that, that. we volunteer. <laughs> Um, and, and David turned in a couple of drawings that he missed because his daughter was having some yes. surgery last night. And I have uh, sheets for those. So, so I'll start now. Do the washing. Get it finished up. Yeah. There they go. Hang on a minute. No. 
the carvings, uh, it should be in that box in one of those. Uh, in the cabinet? Yes. like it's a little thick. <laughs> Let's see if I can wash it off now and we'll take a look at it and see. Are you going to polish it a little? And yes, then, I'll okay. polish it here a little bit. Okay. Chris found some green inlay wax okay. in these smaller tin containers. It'll make it a lot easier to look at occlusal contacts okay. than the gray. Are you okay if she orders? Yeah, whatever else? whatever you want. That's good. I think it'll make it easier to read. The other thought that occurred to me in class was these can all be designed digitally and in fact when the students i talked with them in the other room when they did their zirconium crowns they actually um, digitally designed them and then milled them okay yeah so there'll come a day <laughs> that we won't have to do any of this? I think so, sadly. Well, I think they still learn from this. Well, they do. Anatomy and <clears throat> stuff. The other thing they told me oh, was they still are casting uh, metal and they do the wax up then. So at least for this group, as they go forward, they'll still do the wax up. Okay. But that's an impressive wax up. I think they were able to see how nicely it can be done mm -hmm. pretty quick <laughs> you love it though i do like it it's fun this is how we bought groceries when i was in dental school yeah you did well, the wax I'd, ups to... i'd wax them and cast them for for doctors yep yeah in seattle huh. one doctor wanted to cast them himself which is fine i would just deliver the wax up no kidding but two others wanted it cast and polished the whole way yeah I did it for boards for you know people inlays and stuff. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. That's good. Oh, that's fun. Now I would stay up sometimes till four in the morning doing wax ups and castings. That was when I got tired of country music. <laughs> I'd listen to it all night long, and after a while I thought, oh my goodness, I've had enough. <laughs> That looks really nice. Don't meld it. <laughs> Is your microphone on? It might be. It should be. Yes, yes. Uh 